Yes. My name is Beatrice Hoitaka. And I'm born again this morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I've been on leave. Yes, I've been on leave and I'm back. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <coughs> thank you, thank you. For our visitors, I'm a member of this church. I serve under the leadership of Bishop Chippy Kemani and Pastor Alice and the leadership of this church. And my heart is delighted that this morning I can be given the pulpit. I don't take it for granted. This is the church. And someone to give you the pulpit has given you the church. This is the heart of the vision career. And I want to thank God for our bishop. We've been going through the series of Christian discipline. There are many, and we are not at there. And maybe you're asking, why disciplined? And so disciplined. Please allow your neighbor to be to benefit. If you are all rounded, you are okay. My prayer this morning is just allow your neighbor just to benefit. Today we want to look at the discipline of fasting. Our topic this morning is fasting. And our scripture, we're going to read from the book of Matthew 6, 16 to 18. These are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, when you fast, not if. You know if you can decide to fast or not to fast. But the Bible says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face, 18, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Fasting is a strictly biblical sense. It is not a church thing. It is biblical. And we all live because we get our leading, our guidance from the word of God. And this is the Bible. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. You cannot say that you are fasting. And before you, there is a plate of nyamachoma. Fasting means you separate from something. You separate from food. And it is food. Leave other things because you'll come to other things. But first and foremost, you separate from food. Allow me to say this, friends, that man became poor because of eating. Yes, in the Garden of Eden, God told Adam, eat every eat from this garden, but do not eat the fruits or the tree in the center of the garden. But lo and behold, that's where we go, all these, these things, that, all these sins and all these tribulations because of man disobeying what God has said. He knew that out of that tree, the fruit of that tree, there will be death. And that's where we suffer death. Look at what is happening in our nation now. When you open your TV, sometimes you don't even want to see news. You hear, near the bridge, people perished. You hear, Londiani, people perished. You hear in school, children, class four to class eight, children perished. This is because man ate the fruit that he was not supposed to eat. Therefore, if there is anything you are supposed to abstain from in this Christian life, it is food. If there is anything that will make many of us go to hell, it is food. And you know, the Lord knew you cannot leave the stomach at home. You see how it is placed? In the center. That's where the stomach is placed. So that when you are, your eyes see, the stomach says, that is good. And that is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Fasting is a spiritual weapon, not physical. In the army or in the armory, we can see guns of every type. But those are physical. We can tell this is a gun. This is known as this. There are those who know them by their names. But fasting, it is a spiritual that nobody knows that you are fasting. And that's why the Lord Jesus told his disciples when you are fasting, 
put oil on your head and your face. Let nobody know that you are going through a fasting season. But you want everybody to know so they can sympathize with you. But people see that they have already attained their reward. Many important figures of the Bible. Somebody like David, somebody like Elijah, somebody like Esther, somebody like Hannah. In the New Testament, somebody like Paul and our Lord and Savior Jesus. They all fasted. If Jesus, the Son of God, fasted, who are you that you cannot fast? There are things, friends, there are treasures in the dark place that cannot be revealed to us through fasting. And that's why we have so many retreat centers. You go to, you are, since you have a retreat center there, we go to somewhere like you, this one for SEK, Waumini. But there's one thing I want to bring to you this morning. There are also centers of prayer and fasting. People go there to see God. In that place, they are not so for years. Because what happened when we were going through the, the COVID-19? We were all sent home and told, do, do, do what? Work? From home. Where did you work from? We work from the kitchen. When we came back from COVID-19, some of us, the clothes that you used to wear could not fit you. Because you worked from where? From the kitchen. It is high time. We seek the Lord through. I don't say, this is a pre Bishop preached about prayer last week. Today I'm preaching about fasting. And you know people can pray for you, but nobody can fast for you. Because fasting is a sacrifice. So that I fast for you, I have a Lord. Please know how to fast for yourself. Go before the tell you, I'm coming. Because it is me and you. And put the plate aside. Buana Yesu asifiwe. It is a biblical way of humbling ourselves before God in times of adversity. Remember the life of Esther. Esther first. Imagine she was in the king's palace. As even, think of your life today. If the Lord made a way for you and you got a job in the state house where there is everything and anything, will you fast? You say, no, even the Lord knew I'll be in this place at a time like this. Yes, he knew. But the Lord is after your spiritual life. Not about a physical life, but after physical, uh, spiritual life, sorry. Fasting also helps us to renew our connection with the God. There are things that you can only hear from the Lord when you are. And that's why I tell you, there are places that have been set aside as, as prayer centers. Where, like, like the one in, in Nakuru. And I know most of you, Makaso uh, Mawauko. It is written where divinity meets humanity. You cannot find divinity and humanity in your house. You must set yourself aside. Set yourself apart. Go where there are no sufferers. Go where there are no kiosks. Go where there are no food. Go there. The only thing that's there, it is prayer. And there is grace of prayer in that place. Faith, fasting has, has to be a discipline. Otherwise, it is a blessing we'll never experience. I come again. Fasting has to be a discipline. We are so disciplined that you cannot leave your house when you are naked. Are we together? Just close your eyes and think of this church this morning. If everybody was naked. Are we together? That is a discipline. That you wake up in the morning from your bed. You went, took a shower. Number two, brush your Those are the disciplines. You brush your teeth. From there, you went. There are men who love to put oil on their body. They put several oils there. They, they, there's oil for the head, for the face, for the body, for the armpit. Because you can do this and people will run away. So the people who are very cautious, they want, when they pass... You hear that smell aroma. Even our Lord loves the, the, the smell, the good aroma and the sweet aroma. Those are the disciplines. The same case in the Christian life or the Christian walk, you need discipline. And that number one discipline is fasting. Putting this body under subject. That's what Paul said, that I put my body under subject. He didn't say that he put his mind under subjection or his thoughts or his thoughts or his heart. He said, I put my body under subject. Because this body, friends, will make us miss heaven. As I said in the Garden of Eden, this is the beginning and the, yeah, the beginning of sin started from the Garden of Eden. The same body that was with Adam and Eve, we still have it this morning. It is us to put this body under subjection. 
This body has its own needs and wants. The same case applies to you. Inner man, and in your inner man, it is only fasting, prayer, worship that can make that inner man to grow. It is very unfortunate that you can put your inner man here. He cannot have faith. He cannot stand out by his own because he's too weak, but your outer man is very strong. It is high time. You feed this outer man three times, breakfast, lunch, and supper. Three times in a day. How often do you, do you feed your inner man through fasting? It is said that a man can survive three, di- three days without water and without food. Me, I know because I've done it. Three days. When you go to the doctor, they said the maximum is three days. Me, I've done seven days. Seven days without water and without food. Until you become dehydrated, you, you start scratching your, your skin because the skin is already dehydrated. Because there are things that I go through and I don't know what you go through that make me to separate myself from the plate. And there are blessings, my friends, that you only get when you separate yourself from the plate. I didn't say eating is bad. Everything with its own timing. There's time to eat and time to do what? Ecclesiastes say there's the time for everything. Time to be born and time to die. The same case applies to a Christian life. The same to eat and time to do what? To fast. When is the last time you fasted? Leave alone this one for the church. That we normally fast in the, fast in the month of January for 40 days. We also fast in the month of July for 21 days. Do you have your own time for fasting, seeking the Lord? Or you go with a wave of the church? You need your own timing. There are things that we go through that is only fasting that can make us to overcome. Fasting is voluntary. It is voluntary. Nobody will force you. Even when you are fasting in church, nobody will force you to fast. It is voluntary. Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. A story is told of a man who got married. And one day he woke up. The wife could not see. Leave alone seeing anything in the house. She could not even see her husband because their eyes could not open. But this young man knew a secret. He said, from today, I am going to fast breakfast. He did say everything, breakfast for 100 days. Believe you me, God had. And this young man fasted for 100 days. He never took breakfast. The 100th day in the morning, when he woke up, the wife could see him. So simple discipline, only breakfast. Some people will fast from all solid food, but allow themselves to drink juice. Others will fast from certain kinds of food. You can say, I want to fast meat. Me, I love meat. And you say, I want to fast meat for the next 30 days. God honors that. So long as you are consistent. We cannot grow, friends. We can never grow in this walk without fasting. Because this body is our number one enemy. Therefore, put it under subjection. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. A writer by the name of Seneca said, by overloading the body with the food, you see, overloading, it's not loading, it is overloading the body with food. You strangle the soul and render it less active. How many of our souls are inactive this morning? Because they are overloaded by food. I wish they could be overloaded by something else. By the word of God. By worship. But they are overloaded by food. It's very unfortunate. The discipline of fasting is mentioned in the Bible more times than baptism. In recent times, fasting has become popular. Not only for our spiritual well-being, but also health-wise. You talk to somebody and you, I fasted this thing and I had a tumor. When we went for the checkup, it was no longer there. Fasting works, friends. It works both in the spiritual and even in the physical. When we fast, we withdraw ourselves from the craziness and rush to the 
and so from the craziness and rush of the world and make quietness inside ourselves by opening our hearts and minds to God. When we fast, we withdraw ourselves from the craziness and rush of the world and make quietness from the craziness, you come to the quietness inside ourselves by opening our hearts and minds to God. People may say, I don't know how God speaks. I want to declare to you this morning. Try him through prayer and fasting. Just fast. and I want to fast because I want to hear the Lord. And believe you me, God will speak to you. The purpose of fasting is not to obtain what we want from God. No. Get me right. God is not a vending machine that I want to go before the because I need a car. I want to fast. After 21 days, I want to come out with my car. God is not a vending machine. Where you insert a coin and your problem is instantly sold or an ATM machine. No. The goal of fasting is God's glorification. You want to put this body under subject so you can hear from the Lord. You can know the treasures that are hidden for you. There are things that you are struggling with. You want rent. You want this. The Lord is saying, I wish you could know the key that opens that door. I've given you the bunch of the keys. Just know the key. There's, in a house, there are so many rooms. Are we together? Apart from those who live in self-contained. It is a self-contained. When you do this, you in the hand in this kitchen. When you do this, the hand is on the, t on the bed. When you go front, the head is the, in the bathroom. I'm talking about the house that has so many rooms. Are we together? But you are coming from that. We are coming from that. We are going to many rooms. There's a bunch of keys. And there's no key. One key that opens all the doors. It's every key with its own door. The same case applies to Christian life. The key for fasting can only things that are hidden for you in the fasting realm. The key for prayer can, cannot open the door for, for fasting. Therefore, know the key of, prayer, of, of fasting this morning and open and see what is in that realm because of you. You've been struggling with things. Like somebody who was given a check during a wedding and it was put in a Bible. And this person said, I have so many Bibles. This person thought of giving just me, um, me only a Bible. But there was a check inside that Bible. These people struggled after, uh, after honeymoon. They struggled. And one day they met with this man in town. And this man asked him, how are you? How is your marriage? How is your wife? He said, we are good. And this man said, did you, did you receive my gift? He said, mm, are you sure you received my gift? He said, mm. He said, no. And this man was so concerned. He said, why? Because I gave you a check of these digits. But I went to my account. You have never withdrawn that money. Already the check was still. The same case applies to us. You have a bunch of keys. But use the one for fasting. And you see what the Lord has in store for you. When I see few, eh? Fasting involves a lot more than just Abstinence, abstinence from or abstaining, abstaining from food. When fasting, make sure that sins do not form a wall in between you and God when you are fasting. First and foremost, repent each and every sin you know and you don't know. Sins of commission and sins of omission. That there be no war between you and the Lord when you are fasting. Fasting is a temporal, physical demonstration that we believe the truth declared by the gospel that says Matthew 4.4. 4. The Bible says, man, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man Friends, you cannot live by eating. You only gratify this body. This month, you are, we are wearing dress number, say, 16. Next month, says 18, because the body is building. But my prayer this morning, that we can build the inner man. Are we together? 
Old Testament saints fasted at times of mourning and national repentance. They fasted when they needed strength or mercy to persevere, and then they wanted to hear a word from God. Let's look at the, the book of 1 Samuel 7 and verse number 6. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. Why did they gather? Because they needed repentance. They needed to see the face of it because there's no way sin and God can live in the same house. So repented and God had them. Nehemiah 1.4. Nehemiah 1 4. So it was when I had these words, which was that the walls of Jerusalem are down, that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. This nation, friends, these people like Nehemiah, and I believe you are here. When is the last time you took a day and fasted? For the nation of Kenya. Even what is happening now. Or what happened in the month of, of, of May. The floods. That carried a lot of people. Look at the calamities that have followed this nation. One after the other. When is the past? Well, last year you said. I am going to skip a meal. Every Wednesday. Because of my land Kenya. And I tell, tell you friends. When Kenya is not in peace. You are not in peace. The peace of this nation lies in your hands. And the Lord is counting on you and on me. In the book of Esther 4.16, the Bible says, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for how many days? For three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. It is high time, friends. We put our nation before our knees. We put our church and our families before our knees. Because let me tell you, friends, if there's no peace in Kenya, Esther knew, if her people perish, she's, she has no say. It is us the Lord is counting on. However, fasting was no magical guarantee that God would answer as the intercessors prayed or as it wanted. Let's look at the, the, the book, the Bible in, the, in 2 Samuel 12, 16 to 20. This is the time when David fasted that God would spare the life of Bathsheba's child. But the child died. The Bible says, David therefore pleaded with God for the child. And you know how this child was conceived? De when people went to war, David was left behind. And I want to thank God. Because God said, I found a man after my own heart. Remember the things that David did. David went out in the rooftop and saw a woman bathing. Do you have ladies in this house? Please don't bathe in the open. Yes. David saw a woman bathing. And because of the authority he had and the power he sent for that woman. And you know the rest is history. And this child is the one that Bathsheba conceived when his, her husband was at war and David was left behind. This child got unwell. And so David knew one thing, that I go before the Lord through what? Prayer and fasting. This is what he did. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. 17. So the elders of his house arose and went to God, to, to, to him, to raise him up from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat with them. Verse 18. That on the seventh day, how many days? He did this for seven days. Friends, you cannot corrupt God. Our God cannot be corrupted. Our God cannot be bribed. David thought that the seventh day, the Lord will hear and make the child live. On the seventh day, it came to pass that the child did what? Died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him, and he would not 
heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. Verse 19. When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead, finally. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and when he requested, they set food before him, and he ate. One as if he will. You cannot corrupt God. You cannot bribe God. What he said he's going to do, he is going to do it. One as if he will. Hallelujah. Let's look at some truths as I wind up. Truth number one, Jesus began his ministry with a 40-day fast. Jesus began his ministry with a 40-day fast. He also practiced fasting before healing and overcome temptation. We find this in the book of Matthew 4 verse 2. Bible says, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. This was Jesus. This period of fasting was an act of consecration to God and preparation for his ministry. He knew he must be set aside. He must be consecrated for him to be prepared for me. Because you don't know where you are going. You don't know where we are coming from. We don't know where we are going. So he knew. For me to go and perform miracles, signs and wonders, I must be prepared. There are some habits that can only be defeated through fasting. We find this in the book of Mark 9, verse number 29. Jesus said, this is the time that a, a, a father brought his son to the disciples for them to pray for him. They tried to cast the demon. The demon did not leave. But afterwards, Jesus came and he spoke to the demon and said, get out of this young man. And the demon left. And when it left, the disciples asked Jesus, what was the secret? This is what Jesus told them. This kind can only come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Friends, there are some habits we've been struggling with. Since you got born again, yes, you got born again from the world, or you crossed the, the, the Jordan River from the wilderness, you came along with some habits. You have tried they are not going. They go for one week. Then they are back. You go to sleep. In your sleep. You're already married. You, 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 in your sleep. You have your wife. You in your sleep. You have your children. Because of where you came from. Those are habits. And you cannot detach ourselves from those habits. Through prayer and fasting. Jesus told his disciples. Such demons cannot go. Unless through prayer. And who are we? That we can cast them and they go first time. You know we have an enemy. And the enemy knows where we are going. Because he has been there. So what do you do? He'll bring you the baggage of where you came from. You see a bar and sometimes you, if I can't say take only one, not two. I used to, to drink a whole crate. But I can only take one, just one. This is good for my stomach. Are we together? And then you enter. Those are the habits. You cannot speak a whole truth in one sentence. There must be a lie because of where you came from. Exaggeration. Did you see him? Did you see her? Because of where you came from. Those are the habits. Because those are the demons and the habits that say they cannot come out unless you pray and fast. Fasting has the power to help break bonds of wickedness and do heavy burdens and empower us to break every yoke. That is the work of fasting. And we remain in those bondages unless we know that this can only come out through fasting. A man by the name of Richard Foster declared this. Fasting can bring breakfast in the spiritual realm that will never happen in any other way. That fasting can bring a breakthrough in the spiritual realm. That will never happen in any other way. Try fasting. It is a means of God's grace and blessing that you should not be neglected any longer. 
if there's time we need to fast, friends, it is the time that we are living. Yes, we are living in the dispensation of grace. But this grace cannot be emp- can only be empowered by fasting. You remain there, a Christian, 50 years. A Christian, for, but you have no movement because you don't know how to unlock what it is in the spiritual realm for you. Buanasifiwe. The New Testament church sometimes fasted when it sought God's will and needed grace and strength to remain faithful to God's work. Their purpose was only one, to remain faithful in God's work. There were also times that they linked their fasting with the worship. In the book of Acts 13, 2 and 3, Acts 13, 2 and 3, the Bible says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Many of us here have been called, but there's no way you can know how you are being called unless you knew how to unlock those treasures that the Lord has kept for you. The Lord is saying this morning, I wish you knew what I have for you. You could have stopped praying and I'll start fasting so that I can do what? Open the treasures. 1 Corinthians 9.27, Paul said, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself become disqualified. It is high time, friends, that we look to more. Don't live today, live tomorrow. Yeah, we are natural people, but live in a supernatural life because you want to see what the Lord has for you. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. 1 Corinthians 6.13 1 Corinthians 6.13, the Bible said, food for the stomach and the stomach for food for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy them both. You become a lover of food, you and the food, you be destroyed. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Are we together? Yes. Number two, fasting for the wrong reasons. Fasting for the wrong seasons. Isaiah 58, 5, verse 3 to 7. The Bible says, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you are you take no notice. In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strive with the feast of wickedness. To strike with the feast of wickedness, you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Finally, is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is he to blow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day before the Lord? Is it not a fast? Just right for the interest of time, you read it your own time. When people, live, when people do not live as God desires, they should be prepared for fasting to accomplish nothing. You just fast because people are, are fasting. But fast to accomplish something. That I'm putting this body under service because I need something. Fast that you can do what? Accomplish something. Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hype. We read that from in the beginning. Allow me to go to the next point. Fasting is not a magical way to manipulate God into doing our will. It is not a way to get God to accomplish our plans. Neither is fasting a spiritual way to lose weight or control others. People say, I want to fast for 20 days because I want to lose weight. That is an error. And this morning we are correcting those errors. Fasting clears us out and opens us to intentionally seeking God's will and grace in a way that goes beyond our normal habits 
of worship and prayer. How you touch God through prayer. It's not the way how you touch God through fasting. How you touch God through worship. It's not the same way of how you touch God through fasting. Because we can all of us hear praise. We can all of us hear prayer and worship. But fasting needs a commitment. When while fasting, we are on one on one with God, offering Him the time and attentiveness you might otherwise be giving to eating, shopping, or watching television. You can fast watching television. For those who have gone to the encounter, we emphasize on this that when you are fasting for those three days before you go to the encounter, you fast media. Are we together? Because it's going to corrupt your mind. You fast shopping. You even fast business so that you can put yourself together waiting for that weekend. Finally, fasting is an opportunity. Fasting is an opportunity to lay down our appetite for food, for media, for anything that controls your mind. This act of self-denial may not seem huge. It's just a meal, but it brings to us face to face with the hunger at the core of our being. Yes, that plate you are passing during lunchtime or at supper, it brings you to the core of your being because you've been created with a purpose. Fasting exposes how we try to keep empty hunger at bay and again a sense of well-being by devouring creatures' comforts. You, yes, you are a creature, and the Lord knows that he created us in his own image and likeness, but fasting makes you move above of what you were created for because when you see God during fasting, you find him. Through self-denial, we begin to recognize what controls us. What controls your mind? What controls your thoughts? What controls your life? When you fast, you know what controls you. Our small denials of the, self of the self show us that just how little taste we actually have to sacrifice our time with God. You don't have time with God, but you have time with anything else. When you fast, you have time because the time that you are eating, you are on your knees praying. The times that you are, you, you, people are watching news, you are on, on your knees doing something else. Fasting separates you from so many things. One as if you were. Fasting truth is not meant to discourage us. It's simply the first step in realizing we have to lay down our life in order to gain it again in God. You lay down your life, then you gain it again in God, in a life that is pleasing before God. Buana Yesu asifiwe. Finally, when we fast, we, may, we communicate from the depth of our hearts. And our bodies are genuinely, genuinely desire to see God at work. You are so, when you fast, you are so, your soul communicates with the depth of what the Lord has kept for you. And your body, we genuinely see what the Lord we see. Because we don't see what is in your heart. We see what the Lord has done through your body. We also acknowledge that all things come from God, even our ability to fast. We acknowledge that all things come from God even our ability to fast. If he can give you clothing, he can give you food, he can also give you the grace to do what? To fast. We appeal to him to gently live to us who and what we truly treasure. Do you want to know who you are? You appeal to him and the Lord will come through for you. And as I wonder, up with Akabisa, when we fast, there are several things we are not doing. When we fast, there are several things we are not doing. Number one, we are not bribing God or twisting his arm or demanding our selfish way. When we fast, we are not bribing God. You can never bribe God. You can never corrupt God. We cannot twist his arm or demand ourselves. That it is my way 
and this, my way. No. Number two, when we fast, we are not trying to earn merit or favor from him. When we fast, we are not trying to earn favor or merit with him. Fasting in itself doesn't bring righteousness or forgiveness or even holiness. One as a fear. As you fast, keep your eyes fixed upon the Lord. Remember these cautions. Always keep before you. Always what you keep before you is all about him. What is before you is about the Lord. Through him and from him. You owe nothing. You have nothing. All that you have, all that you want, all that you will be, it is from him. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you. We want to bless you this morning. Thank you for speaking to our hearts this morning. We surrender our lives to you, Jehovah, because, you know, we are not yet there. We need you to your master because we need to grow from one level of glory to another. And Jehovah, Father, if it is fasting that has made us to stagnate this morning, Jehovah God, we plead for the grace to fast. We know it is a sacrifice, Jehovah Father. We deny our self food, and we know we need this food for this body. But you want to set ourselves apart. Give us the grace to fast. Give us the grace to seek your face to your Father. Give us the grace to say no to food so that we can say yes to your will. Help us to put this body down so that we can lift it again, a new body, through you in the name of Jesus. We love you this morning because you never let us go astray. You love us as you bring us back to where we belong so that we can walk together with you. We bless you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.